Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to the book of the prophecy of Haggai. Haggai chapter 1 from the authorized version of the scriptures commonly called the King James Version. Please get your copy of the authorized version of the scriptures. Turn with me where we will turn, follow me along, and read along with me. Please, I expect you to. I'm going to address you as if you are. Do you got it? Haggai, chapter 1, beginning at verse 2, on to verse 11. For instruction and in righteousness... We need a lot of that. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. We still got time, right? Still got time. Nothing really big's happening at the moment. Still got time. Oh, I'll consider. Um, coming to the Lord broken, contrite, and fear of the Lord calling upon his name. I'll consider that tomorrow because, of, you know, we still got time. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lieth wa lie waste? Excuse me. Now therefore... Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Now for instruction on in righteousness. There is no house or temple or building that God dwells in made with hands. We're, we're going to look at that. Um, if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. God, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Father, who is also the Holy Ghost, you know, the Lord is that spirit, dwells within you. And that seal is in you. You know, your seal, eternally secure, once saved, always saved. That's the circumcision made without hands that is within you. Are you, number one, are you neglecting your, um, your relationship with the Lord? Are you neglecting that? Is the temple... Falling apart because of neglect between yourself and our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? Too busy living it up without taking time to be with Him? What, what excuse are you going to give me? Huh? You ain't got time to get into the Word? Oh, shut up. I love you. I love you very much. Shut up. Shut up. Don't even say, don't even play that. Don't even play that. Things too busy. There'll be a time where you're going to say, I wish I have, would have done more. I wish I would have done more. As far as spending time with our Lord Jesus Christ in relationship, in his word, in prayer, speaking to him. See, the enemies don't want you here. They want you trailing behind them. Whiffing the uh, toxic... <laughs> stench that comes from them. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. What kind of fruit are you bearing? Do you have fruit? Does it seem everything that you're doing in your walk with the Lord doesn't seem to satisfy you? Why is that? Why is that? Verse 7, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider 
your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. It's instruction and righteousness. Doctrinally, dispensationally, blah, blah, he's talking about an actual temple and building the house and stuff like that. Okay? Doctrinally and dispensationally, not directed at us, but for our instruction and righteousness. Go up to the mountain. Go to the Lord. Go to the Lord. Bring wood. Bring humility. And build. Work out. Work out what he had put in to you. Not work to save yourself. No, no, no. But work out what has been put in. That is unless, of course, the Lord has not put anything in. Consider your ways. Verse 9. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little, poquito. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why? Saith the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste. And ye run every man unto his own house. So, for our instruction and in righteousness, Church of the Living God, are you in decay spiritually because you are neglecting your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? I talk to him every day. I pray every day. Good for you. Praise the Lord. How about the scriptures? Well, I don't. Well, I don't do. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I don't. Brother, sister, listen to me. A faith void of the word of God is pathetic. You, don't you even give me excuses. You're going to give the Lord an excuse, by the way? But don't even, don't even tell me about it. Like I've told you before, I know of people who have four kids, wake up early in the morning to work on a farm, Spill and still, to this day I'm sure, spend still to this day 45 minutes a day at least with our God, our Savior, in His Word, the authorized version of the Scriptures. With four children, a wife. You gonna tell that, brother? Well, I just don't have time. How is your relationship with the Lord right now? Hmm? How is it? Is it in decay? Are you neglecting the reading of the word? You know, Peter talks about um, desiring the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. And also the meat, strong meat. Are you neglecting the word? Prayer is wonderful. Praise, prayer is a necessity. But if you're doing one and neglecting the other. Also, the, the opposite is true. Are you in the scriptures, but avoiding prayer? Hmm. Like I told you, there's going to come a time when you're going to say, I wish I had spent more time in the word. Or I wish I would have spent more time in prayer. No day like today, is there? But you're too busy, right? You're too busy. Look, uh, those of you who know me personally, uh, you know that uh, when it comes to this specific thing, um, I hope, and those of you out there who know, um, I'll, I always say, you know, I love you, but don't don't give me that bologna sandwich about why you're not in the scriptures. Don't give it to me. Don't, don't even say, don't go there. <laughs> don't go there. Okay? <laughs> I love you. I don't want to have to bite your head off. Okay? <laughs> Verse 10. Now, 
for our instruction in righteousness. What happens when you neglect these things? Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. Dew, which nourishes the ground, the grass, the water, or the water, which is dew, basically, nourishes. Out of your belly will flow living water. Okay? And the earth is stayed from her fruit because you are not being watered by the scriptures. And I called for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon that which the ground bringeth forth and upon men and upon cattle and upon all the labor of the hands. Verse 7. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Consider your way. Now, again, to reiterate about, you know, temp building a temple here, as they're doing here in the Old Testament. Go to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. We're going to visit Acts chapter 7 literally a few times today. Okay. Acts chapter 7. Verses 48 on to verse 50. And see... This is where rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly dividing being dispensational plays into uh, the equation. Because in the Old Testament, under the law, they had a physical temple. Today, there is no physical temple except our bodies. Okay? Not a building like Roman Catholicism wants you to believe. Okay? But even thus... Acts chapter 7, verses 48 on to verse 50. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Even in the Old Testament, with the temple, which became an idol, by the way. Um, what did we just read? That is where he would focus our Lord. That's where he would focus. He would go to the temple in the Old Testament times, but it became an idol unto the children of Israel and unto many others. And today, the church buildings, because of uh, Roman Catholicism, they are te uh, temples of idol worship. But see, howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, said, as said the prophet. And also, of course, we have to go here to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 16 on to verse 20. <clears throat> now, if you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, a new creature in Christ Jesus, know ye, uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verses 16 on to verse 20. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, and the Lord is that Spirit? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Pause it. Go look that up. Make sure you read the context, okay? If any man, the lost world, or yourself, or yourself, <laughs> If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are, if you are saved. If God is in you. You know, that seal. Until the day of redemption. That circumcision made without hands. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit. Is he in there? Is he in there? Huh? If any man defile the temple of God, any man, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. Self-deception hmm. 
If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world. Now, remember, wisdom is equated in, onto the context in which it appears. Most of the time, and generally of the time when you read about wisdom, it is usually equated onto the fear of the Lord, because you're reading Job chapter 28, verse 28, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Okay? In every uh, occurrence of wisdom or wise, it is not always talking about the fear of the Lord. You have to remember that. It's defined by the context. But on a general sense, you can always acclaim to wisdom being that of the fear of the Lord, obviously. So with that, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, wise in this world, fearing the things of this world, or being educated in your mind by the things of the world because you know worldly things, hmm. Let him become a fool that he may be wise. Now, what's the comparison here? The fool has said in his heart there is no God, and wisdom is equated unto the fear of the Lord. So, in this context, if someone who is wise in the world, fears the things of the world, has brains and worldly things, for those who are of the church of the living God, who have the Holy Ghost dwelling in them, Unto those who are wise in this world, we, the church of the living God, in the eyes of those who are in the world or of the world, excuse me, who are of the world, to them we are fools, saying that there is no God. But see, those who are wise in this world, fear, fear the things of the world, who is their God? Their God is their belly. Their God is Lucifer, the little G God. I, 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 me, me, me. Hmm. Let's read, let's read on. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. See, see the comparison? In verse 18, look at the scriptures, man. Come on. Okay. Someone who is wise in this world, so those who have brains in this world, who think they know something when they know nothing, you know, they're evolutionists and stuff like that. Um, we who follow the scriptures, who are truly saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God, Unto them we are fools. But God twists it and says, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise, those of the world, in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Context. What is the wisdom being talked about? Fear of man, bring a snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made safe. Things of the world. And remember, Satan uh, savors the things that be of man, not the things that be of God. Satan's a fan of man. Okay? Okay? Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. What verses, brother? That's right. Uh, 14 on verse 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. This is not talking primarily in the context of the marriage union. Okay? Prove that to you. Okay. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. So, someone who has the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Lord is that Spirit dwelling within, within them, within us, okay? We are not to have fellowship with those who are not of us. That does not mean that we're not supposed to be out there witnessing. Uh, Paul talks about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, actually, let's go there, okay? It's for you gainsayer, for you naysayers, excuse me, okay? Let's go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. This is, he's not talking about, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 
verses 9 on to the close of the chapter in 1 Corinthians 5, verses 9 on to verse 13. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or with extortioners, or with idolaters. For then must ye needs go out of the world. Okay, so here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, when in verse 16, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Okay? See, it's talking about fellowship. It's not necessarily, uh, even though you can, you can use this and equate this uh, onto the marriage. You can. But it's primarily talking about fellowship. Okay? You know, you are the company you keep, that kind of thing. Okay? And we know that because Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11 now. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an, or an extortioner. With such an one know not to eat. See, it's talking about fellowship in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. But let's finish this. For what have I to do to judge them also that with that are without? Oh, there's that judging thing that so many of you have a problem with. Yeah. Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, picking up at verse 17. Wherefore, come out, be holy, separate, other, from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Consider your ways. I'm going to Matthew chapter 13, a little bit more for our instruction in righteousness. Matthew chapter 13, verses 11, on to verse 23. Come on. Matthew chapter 13, verses 11, on to verse 23. Let's read 10, on to verse 23, beg your pardon. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Dispensational difference here. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Kingdom of heaven is actually Jerusalem, where our Lord Jesus Christ is going to come down at his second coming, rule and reign with us, the church of the living God. Okay? And those, of course, who make it through the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? This is for our instruction in righteousness. Okay? This is about the parable of the sower. Okay? For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath, hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. See, you're wise in this world. God calls the wisdom of this world foolishness. So you think you got something, but you ain't got it. See. But see, those of us who have, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, more is given. Whereas what these people of the world think that they have, even that is taken away from them because they think they have it all. Blah! Strange, is it not? <laughs> Let's continue. Therefore speak to I therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seen see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. Which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, 
and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest any at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Look at verses 13 on to verse 15. Therefore speak I to them to, in parables, because they seen, see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart and should be converted, and I should heal them. Hold your, hold your place here. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Oops, oops. Not Acts. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 23 under verse 32. Huh? Oh, excuse me. 1 Corinthians, wrong one. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 16. Beg your pardon. I got my notes mixed up. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 16. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, capital S, that's himself. For the Spirit, capital S, searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man, that which is in him? And that Spirit of man, it's not the spirit of, of our Lord, obviously. And that spirit of man is corrupt. That old man, that man of Adam. So that spirit of man is spirit of this world. And that spirit of man, until it is redeemed, is that spirit of Antichrist. There's a difference there between them, but they usually work in unison together, don't they? For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the, so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have not, for now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Note the lower S, meaning that it's imparted, okay? Talking about how God has imparted himself onto us, okay? That's why that's a lowercase s and not capital. Okay, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. It just defined itself right there. Freely given. See, the lowercase s, spirit which is of God, is talking about what he has given. He has given himself, which is a capital S, yes. But in this context, it's being talked about as what the Lord has given himself. And it's defined itself. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. That's why it's capital S. Do you understand? If you're of the church of the living God, you're going to get that. If you're not, even if you're a babe, look at the verse. It explains itself. And the Lord give you wisdom. Okay? Let's continue. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, which is the spirit of this world. Hmm. You know, to uh, philosophy and vain deceit but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual, the spirit that is in you, that is of God, with spiritual, the authorized version of the scriptures. So the spirit of God, comparing spiritual things, the spirit that's within you, with spiritual, the, uh, the scriptures, the authorized version, not a Bible. 
But the natural man receiveth not the things of the capital S, Spirit of God. Natural, unregenerate, only a Christian. Like I told you before, please get offended at this. Never trust a Christian. Never trust a Christian. I'm not a Christian. If you're saved, born again, converted, you're of the church of the living God. Get over it and drop the word Christian. Not going to get off on that. Let's continue. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. They don't have the Spirit. They have the spirit of man, which is the spirit of this world, which is that spirit of Antichrist. There are differences between them. Yes, there is, but obviously. But the one works in unison with the other as with the other. Just look at that. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. Oh, wow. Wow. Huh? For who hath known the mind of the Lord that we that he may that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ, because Christ liveth within us. And you know, like I told you, you know, you got these guys who come in uh, uh, Romans chapter 16. Um uh, Verses 17 on to verse 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine, not feelings, doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, their own flesh. And by good words, fair speeches, and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Yes. Yes. Now go back to Matthew chapter 13. Let's pick up from verse 18 on to verse 23. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, Satan, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. They're here, they'll hear it. But Satan's like, that, 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 that's nonsense. It's foolishness. And of course, that person will be like, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Number two. But he that receives seed into stony places, the same as he that heard, that heareth the word, and Anon, by and by, with joy receiveth it. Stone. Stony places. But they hear the word, it's like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Yet, he hath not root in himself. Because you can't go through that stony place. See, can't grow downward. It's only as hard as an animate stone, like a hardened heart. So they hear it. It's like, Jesus loves you, and he just wants to bless you. Or, just believe, and you'll just believe and receive. They're like, oh, goody, yay, I'll be a Christian. Yet, hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. This you can attribute to the good old fashioned, yea, hath God said. Yea, hath God said that the authorized version is God's perfect word? Yea, hath God said that uh, you, you need to come to the Lord broken and, and contrite and have fear of him? 
Yeah, have God said that you, you're not supposed to do the things of the world? See, they endure for a while. Because the, it was on stone and couldn't get root downward, couldn't grow. So they endure for just a little while. Number three. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful unfruitful now this is we're looking at this for instruction and in righteousness obviously but there are those of the church of the living God who are truly saved born again converted new creatures I, I, I gotta get the steel of the Jesuit poniard because I, 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 I'm no better than an infidel the scripture says so I need to provide for my own so I need to go get that I got to put myself in debt because I need to get, you know, this lap of luxury. People, what, <laughs> have you not been to the grocery store lately and seen the depleting of goods? Have you not noticed the inflation on things? But yet Satan likes to distract to have you take your eyes off of Jesus and have it pointed onto the world. And then you looked for worldly things to satisfy you rather than things of the scriptures. See, being satisfied from himself, not by your own self, but that if you're of this church of the living God, the Lord lives within you and he will satisfy you. The things of the world. <laughs> but see, there are those out there he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Choke. You ever been choked before? Whether, you know, guillotine or, or just... Uh, Choking, being choked is a very scary and it's also slow. You know? <laughs> you know? And it becomes unfruitful. Because we ought to know better. And of course, verse 23. But he that receives seed into the good ground, and there is none good but one, that is God, is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. So the question is for our instruction in righteousness. Which one are you? Which one are you? Which one are you? 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Galatians. Close. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 5 and 8. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. In the faith, whether or not you are saved. Because, you know, there are those out there who say, well, it's just believe. Just believe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. But um, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except 
ye be reprobates. No good. Things that uh, float to the top being waste. Things that are removed for purification. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you? Except ye be reprobates. But I trust that ye shall know that we, those of the church of the living God, are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, because we are to hate evil, despite what some who put on a facade of weakness like to say. We are to hate evil. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates, as reprobates in the sight of the world. See, when we do things honest in accordance to the scripture, the world sees us as reprobates, but we're not reprobates. But if Christ Jesus, if Jesus Christ is not in you, then you are reprobates. You get it? Okay? Verse 8. For we can do nothing against the truth before the truth. You can do nothing against the truth before the truth. See, there are many out there who can speak from the scriptures because the script, this is truth and the scriptures teach for themselves. Absolutely they do. That is why those who are not of the church of the living God can put on a really good shoe and speak truth because the truth speaks for themselves. But is the Lord really in there? How would you know? We are to examine ourselves. How do you do that? Hmm. Uh, before we get a little bit more into that, go to 1 Corinthians now, chapter 11. Here's something that uh, you Catholics, you coadjutors out there, really like to have uh, make a mess of. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 under verse 32. This is talking about the Lord's Supper, which Catholics tell you is the you is the Eucharist, okay? That disgusting, vomitous blasphemy, uh, which uh, you know, which these people who get offended when you talk about flesh as being a skin suit, they get all offended and uppity because they're Catholics and their God is the little wafer God, okay? But. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23, on to verse 32. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And the Catholics are like, oh, yeah, we do. But that's how we get saved. No. <laughs> no. No. It's, it is literal to, in remembrance. In remembrance. Let's continue. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. Shew the Lord's death. We, as the church of the living God, we are crucified with Christ. Yet nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth within me. And we are crucified unto the world. So when we take communion... Shewing Christ's death, meaning what? Showing that we have died to this world. Okay? That we have died to ourselves. Because remember, read Isaiah chapter 53. Okay? Of what our Lord went through. For you. For me. For you. That's why he is really adamant about you coming to him on his terms. Not some fictitious thing that you make up yourself, but according to his terms. So, 
For as oft, often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he comes. Till he come. In remembrance. Communion is when we, number one, remember what the Lord did for us. We are to do that every day. Not, you don't need to have communion every day, but uh, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, there, man, woman, um, church of the living God, brother, sister, do you not praise the Lord every single day for what he did for you on the cross? I know I do. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. What does that mean? Verse 28. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Verse 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So, but let a man examine himself. The unworthily, unworthily. You're going to go have communion with our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, have a little thing of grape juice and a matzah, unleavened bread, and have communion. Uh, Myself, my wife, and our best friend, the last time he was here, we had communion ourselves, okay? Communion is good to do. And it's a time of reflection where you think upon what the Lord has done for you, but also of self-examination. And if you go to have communion with the Lord unworthily, not discerning his body, not thinking about what the Lord has done for you, and you're going to go to have communion with our Lord in open sin or in hidden sin? Not examining yourself? See, communion is just that. Remembering what the Lord did for you and self-examination. It is not salvific. Okay? Communion, the Eucharist, the mask is satanic. This is not, it's not salvation. It's not needful for your salvation at all. It's a time of remembrance. It's a time of reflection, okay? And if you go to have communion while in sin, not discerning the Lord's body, you know, you're going to go thank the Lord for what he did for you and uh, be living in sin. Unrepentant sin or whatever it is. That's what he's talking about. Now, and because of that, verse 30, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep, are dead. Why are there many weak and sickly among us? Maybe because they don't discern the Lord's body and claim that they are of us and maybe are not of us, but those who are of us and living in sin and neglecting that temple, their body, not just physically, but spiritually, by uh, not reading the scriptures, not being in prayer. You get where we're going with this? Is the Lord Jesus Christ truly in you or what? How would you know? How would you know? Hmm. Verses 30, uh, verse, uh, 31 and 32. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with this world. With the world, excuse me. With that. Look at those two verses. Don't look at me. For if we sh would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. You know in Acts chapter 17, verses 10 on to verse 12, look them up on your own time about how they search the scriptures daily, whether these things were so. Are you searching the scriptures daily? daily? 
I love you so much. Don't, don't, you don't give excuses. And please don't come to me with your excuses. I don't care. I don't want to hear it. I don't think the Lord does either, even though he's a lot, he's a little bit more understanding. But uh, are you neglecting our Lord who is in you? How would you know? Hmm? How would you know? But then again, you know, there are those out there who, okay. So if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. So how do you know? How do you know if the Lord is in you? There are those of you who will be, well, because I believe, I believe, I just believe. Okay. James chapter 2. This one, this is like the easiest one to use to to debunk these twits who, you know, easy believism devils. Um, James chapter 2, verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Hmm. Hmm. So, you're, you're saved because you, you believe, right? That's how you know that the Lord is in you. Or even better, you, you, you could say you, you know you're saved because you can. Uh, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. So just because you can say something, you no, know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Just because you can say that, that means you're saved. And that the Lord is in you. But yet you can utter that, but everything else about you points as you being a lost devil. No. No. See, um, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. You go ahead and say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. You say that all day and all night till you're chartreuse in the face, looking at your mirror, uh, combing your beard and smoking your cigarettes all day and all night. Go right ahead. It proves nothing. Uh, you shall know them by their fruits. Proves nothing. Proves nothing. The context to that is for those who preach. Okay, I've talked about this on many times, you know. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. It's in regards, it's in context to those who are preaching, prophesying, okay? Not as a willy-nilly, just because you can say that means you're saved. No, no. But also about this belief thing. Go to Acts chapter 8. <laughs> Acts chapter 8. Uh, Acts chapter 8. You believe, huh? Good for you. The devils also believe and tremble. So, because you can say something and because you believe that guarantees that God's in you. I don't think so, buddy. Um, Acts chapter 8, verses 13 on to verse 24. This is talking about Shimon the sorcerer, who bewitched people, who him making people out that he was some great one, right? Then along comes Philip. Then Shimon himself believed also. And there are people, these devils, these idiots. Um, you're an idiot if you're an easy believism devil. Yeah, you are. You're a void of logic and reason. But uh, there are those out there who say that this guy was actually saved. Why? Because he believed. <laughs> uh, up to dosage, buddy. Then Shimon himself believed also, and he was baptized too. Yeah. He continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, the big guns. And when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, 
and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Shimon, now, okay, this guy believed. Okay, so according to these devils, this guy was saved. No, but pay attention to this. And when Shimon saw that through the lying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. So he saw that what they were doing, there was the Holy Ghost. So he believed, he was baptized, but he saw, it's like, oh, wow, you're doing that and giving that to them? Saying, give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Aha! See, his intention was himself. His God was his own belly. He was his own God. See, he didn't want the Holy Ghost for to glorify God as to, you know, I'm saved, praise you, Lord, thank you, as to a relationship. No, he saw, he saw only this because he wanted to have it so he could put it on people and they would pay him for it. How do you know that? Well, he offered them money. It's like, here, get, I'm, here's money. Give me that so I can give people that and have, you know, be made out to be a great one again. Those aren't the actions of someone who is truly saved. But Peter said unto him, and here's the proof. Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift, the gift by grace through faith, the gift of God may be purchased with money. See, verses 18 and 20 prove to you that Shimon here was not saved. But see, these idiots, these devils, these wicked, uh, easy believism people, he was saved. He was just in error. No, he wasn't saved. Because someone who is truly saved, born again, converted, is not going to offer money to get the things of God. That is a free gift. Namely, salvation. What do you think these people who give money to these church buildings and to these TV televangelists, what do you think they're doing? Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Remember, God knows your heart. And he does. But the, is it his? I doubt that highly. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness. So, hey, are you idiots? Are you easy believism devils? Repent is believe, right? But wait, okay, according to your philosophy, believe, therefore, of this thy wickedness? But he already believed. <laughs> that does, well, that doesn't make sense, Brad. Yeah, I know, neither does easy believism. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And here's the nail in the coffin. I've run into this one, verse 24, with many people. See, salvation is personal. You need to be broken of your self-righteousness and you need to be sorry because it's your fault that he died. It's your fault. And having been broken, having godly sorrow, ought to produce in you fear because you're going to go to hell and stand before a righteous God who has every right to put you there. That ought to scare the hell at you. And then you're going to call on his name and may he save you. See, you go to him personally. You go to the Lord. If you're rebuked, if something happens, someone of the church of the living God who wants God is going to go to God. But there are those who want God just for what he gives, but yet wants nothing to do with him. Then answered Shimon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Now, that ain't nothing wrong with asking for the church of the living God for prayer. 
Absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. We are encouraged to do that through the scriptures. But in this context, Peter's like, you're, 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 you're fake. Go away. Your heart's not right. You're lost. Go away. And what does Shimon do instead of it's like, well, wow, okay, I'm lost. Wow, I believe. I was baptized. I did this, this, and this. I, I believed. Oh, Lord, what, what, what should I do? Lord, help me. No, could you pray for me? You see? This guy wasn't saved. People, people, <laughs> people, please, please. Don't buy these lies from these easy believism devils. You have been warned long enough. You, you really have. If you fall for these idiots, good luck. So, now remember, belief is an integral part onto salvation. Absolutely. Absolutely. But see, how do you arrive onto that belief appropriately? According to scripture, is through brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord. Not sidestepping that and then going up another way. So just because someone believes and can say something, that proves that they have God in them. I don't think so. What about, what about, they got to change life. Oh, there are many out there who can uh, take on a lot of religiosity and have many changes, but not be a new creature. Perfect example I've given before. Look at those who go to the Satanic Alcoholics Anonymous. They have changed life, don't they? Let's look at this. Go to Matthew chapter 7. Have a changed life. What about a new creature? Change life. Did your life change? Uh, there, well, Matthew chapter 7, instruction in righteousness, chapter 7, verses 21 on to verse 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, <coughs> ye that work iniquity. Hmm. Hmm. So many will say, Lord, Lord, but yet they don't have a personal relationship with him. A relationship derived from a broken heart and a contrite spirit. But no, the knowing that most people have is just here, not here. Go to Matthew chapter 23 now. Matthew chapter 3 is describing the condition right before the time of Jacob's trouble, before, you know, we're caught up, and then begins the time of Jacob's trouble. This is the atmosphere before the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew chapter 23, verses 23 on to verse 28. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For, you, for ye pay tithe of mint and anus and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Judgment. You know, you're a Christian, right? Or, or even better, you claim to be of the church of the living God. And you got a problem with judgment? I got a problem with you because I don't think you're saved. I don't think you're saved. If you're of the church, if you claim to be of the church of the living God and you have a problem with judgment and you make all these excuses and try to and chaff and redirect on judgment, you got a problem with judgment? There's a problem there. Is Jesus in there? If you got a problem with judgment, 
And you're claiming to be of the church of the living God? I don't think so. I don't think so. But it says, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. And it begins with judgment. Go figure that out. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye may clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Oh, you can have a changed life. You can have a religious experience. And many things can change. But are you a new creature? Many things. Oh, you can change certain things. Yes, you can walk a different way, look a different way, speak a different way. But are you a new creature? Hmm? Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteousness unto on, on uh, even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. But within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. And from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. You, you can't hide that forever. That comes out. That comes out. Now go to Galatians. Go to Galatians. Go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 5. Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us in, on, bring us into bondage. Bring us into bondage. Now, context, he's talking about those who are going under the law. But there are other forms of bondage that people, that these false brethren will come in to spy on us, on our liberty that we have in Christ Jesus. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now, the Lord is that Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's go there. I've, I've, I've quoted this to you all enough. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now, the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And you can read the, read the entire chapter for the whole context. And it's telling you, now the Lord is that Spirit, capital S. That spirit, the Holy Ghost, it's our Lord Jesus Christ who is our Father. One God comprises spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Okay? But the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And that's not meaning you're free to go and sin. We're, we'll, we'll touch on that. But, okay, now go back to Galatians chapter 2, verse 4 again. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came into privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us unto bondage. Bondage under law? Bondage under sin? Oh, you you believe? Just, just believe God, you know, you don't, a new creature? Don't worry about it. 
Uh, yeah, you should abstain from these things. But hey, you believe you're saved. That's bondage. That's not freedom. See, that freedom that those these lying devils are giving you is a freedom for you to go and sin without conscience. With a seared conscience. You sear it with the uh, easy believism doctrine of belief. Only saved by my belief. To whom we gave place by subjection? No, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Now go to Galatians chapter 5. Not Ephesians, Brad. Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 9. Now, someone can have a religious experience and change many things. But yet them, they, they themselves are not a new creature. This is why we're looking at this in Galatians. Because someone could have a religious experience, a religious experience. Got a video about what about I think about religion. But there are all those out there who can have a religious experience. And have an experience, not a conversion. And in that experience, they could do things that are found in the scriptures. It's like, okay. Well, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be doing that. It's like, okay, okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. But see, yet within, they're full of dead men's bones because there's not an inner conversion. They're just doing those things that they read mechanically because they know that's what they should do, not because the Lord is in them, guiding them on to that. You see the difference? Because someone who believes, who's saved by their own belief, they believe. They're not a new creature, but they can have a changed life because it's like, okay, so I should be doing this, I should be doing this. But then, when challenged on it, when confronted on it, through the scriptures or through those of the church of the living God, teeth come out. See, many can do religious practices, even things contained in the scripture, but yet not have the Lord in them and be a new creature. Verse five, uh, Galatians 5, verses 1 on to verse 9. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. If you willingly go under the law to keep the law, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. How whosoever of you are justified by the law, justified by what you do, ye are fallen from grace. Ah. Ah. See, the grace of God that bringeth salvation, because you are saved by grace through faith, that grace of God. God within you will guide you on to change because you are a new creature. But see, there are those out there will do things of the law or otherwise meaning they will do things to justify themselves rather than being justified by the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ who is in us. You see? See what I'm saying? For we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith with work which worketh by love. Hey you, ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. See, many people can who call themselves Christians or even think they are saved can do things in the flesh. It's like, okay, I'm supposed to be at the church of the living God, so I gotta dress a certain way. Oh, I'm I, I gotta I gotta talk a different way. I gotta think a different way, okay? But yet the old is more present than supposedly the new. Now granted. We have the church of the living God. We can get messed up. Yes, we can. But see, and we're, we're going to address that next about the ch chastening. There's two kinds of chastenings. 
There's a chastening that comes from God our Father. And there is a chastening that comes from Satan unto his. Yeah. Getting a little ahead of myself. Go to Galatians chapter 6 now. Galatians chapter 6. Brethren, we're going to read the whole chapter. Can you handle it? Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. So as the church of the living God, we are to be having charity, self-sacrifice. And there are those who can fake charity. But see, charity done out of a pure heart requires nothing in return. But there, there are those out there who exercise charity to hold it against them, right, buddy? Say, well, I've given you all this, this, and this. Therefore, you owe me. Yeah. 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 For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. And see, those who think they are and are not, but yet are doing things that they think safe people should do, they are deceiving themselves that they are something when they are nothing. Mm. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. In himself alone. Because if the Lord is in you, the Lord is going to tell you and reward you and thank you and that kind of stuff. See, but let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself. If you're of the church of the living God, who, who is in you? <laughs> yeah, the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you're faking it, spirit of man, that spirit of the world. See where we're going, right? Let's continue. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You know, you do your things, your charitable works, your good things, your good deeds, your changes that you brought about. <laughs> um, are you sowing to your flesh to be seen of men? Or is it something that, as the result of being a new change, uh, a new creature, change has been wrought because you are a new creature? For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, which a lot who fake or even are self-deceived, thinking they are saved and are not, where who do these changes that they bring about, they're actually sowing to their flesh, and of their flesh they shall reap corruption, because works like that that are not produced after salvation because of a new creature is present, are only a facade that will decay in time. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. See, being a new creature, the change will, we are to work out what the Lord hath put in, okay? That being worked out of us is going to produce, as it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse uh, 10. Okay, everybody doesn't, not everybody likes to read verse 10. And they always say verses 8 and 9, but you encompass verse 10, okay? See, we do the good works because we are saved and we are working out not to save ourselves or to stay saved, but they work out because of what has been put in. Someone who is faking that will try to mimic, saying, okay, I'm supposed to look different. I'm supposed to talk different. But then again, they're still of the world. They're not a new creature. I hope this isn't you. 
How can you tell? Try giving up some of the things that you really love that are of this world, that aren't needful for the body. Does your stubbornness get in the way? And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. How do you do good unto these lost people? Ministers of reconciliation, having the word of reconciliation, we are ambassadors on the Christ. Okay? See how see ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For ne neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid, see now, Verses 12 and 13. The fake glory in their flesh. Well, look at me. I have a changed life. But are you a new creature? How did that new, how did that change come about? Because of something you did? Or because it is the Lord who wrought change in your life? See, verses 12 and uh, 13 and 14. Uh, verses 12, excuse me, on to verse 13 are talking about those who do these things in the flesh. Whereas verse 14, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature, here, let me let me get up and go home. Okay. <laughs> there it is for you. <laughs> okay, there it is. Okay. <laughs> you get it? For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, things that you do, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule. Peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. And, and also now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 and verse 7. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Is your change according to the flesh? Or is it because you are a new creature and the Lord is in there? Just because you have a changed life doesn't mean you're a new creature. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience is, for full, is fulfilled. 
Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. See, from out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You shall know them by their fruits. There are people out there who can really fake it really good and give off this persona as if they have a changed life because they're a new creature, but actually they have simply a changed life and not a new creature. They say they believe and can say something, but yet that doesn't prove that you're saved. And merely having a changed life that doesn't actually prove that you're saved either. But what about chastening? Because where's chastisement, right? Chastisement is the level of to prove. Is it? Is it? So, just because someone can say something or say they believe, yet doesn't guarantee or prove that they are of the church of the living God. Someone can have a changed life but not be a uh, new creature. So just because certain things have changed in their life doesn't necessarily also mean that they are of the church of the living God. What about chastisement? Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Verses 5 on to verse 13. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Believe and receive. <laughs> so you you save yourself. Good luck. No, um, whom he receiveth. He receives you. You don't receive him. Big difference. Let's continue. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. A bastard doesn't know who his father is. And in, con in context, if God isn't chastening you, then you're not his. Hence, you don't know who your true father is. But yet, in the same breath, they might know who their actual father is. Who is the devil? Really? Let's, get, well, let's continue. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards, and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh who corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Fathers of our flesh, and they corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits, and live? See, there's, there's a difference noted in verse 9. Look at verse 9. Don't look at me. Look at verse 9. Furthermore, we had fathers of our flesh. Doth not the scripture say that Satan um, values the things that be of men more than God? Satan is all about flesh. I know that the, what this is talking about is our fathers, our biological fathers. I get that. I get that. I, I know that. But think about this. If you're not of the church of the living God, there's no middle ground. You're of this world. You're of Satan, whether you want to accept that or not. And if God is not your father, even though he is the father of spirits, if God is not your father, then you are still under Pharaoh, under bondage to your father, which is Satan. Okay. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they very verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. Roll that around in your head a little bit. 
but he, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, for our prophet, prophet, that we might be partakers of his holiness, being separate than that. Mm. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Hmm. So one uh, chastises us for their own pleasure, but our Lord chastises us for our profit. That in the end thereof, we may do better in the end of our life. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. One second, brethren. Proverbs chapter 3. Beg your pardon for that. You didn't see anything. Just never mind. Proverbs chapter 3. Lost my place. 11 on to verse 18. Proverbs 3, verses 11 on to verse 18. My son... Despise not the despise not the chastening of, chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. If you are of the Lord Jesus Christ, those whom I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore and repent. But if you do not belong unto him as to a relationship of the church of the living God and his body, you belong to Satan. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, the fear of the Lord, uh, wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding, departing from evil. Job 28, 28. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than a fine gold. So, when our Lord chastens us, it's to, number one, fear him, and that we may depart from evil. But when Satan actually chastens his other, his children, it's not to that they depart from evil. No, because he's a cruel Lord. And remember too, Satan is a counterfeit and wants to copy everything that is of God. So Satan will chasten his own children to make it look as if it's chastening maybe from the Lord. Think about that one. Think about that one. How come bad things happen to bad people? Let's continue. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days are, is in her right hand, and in her left hand, hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is every one that retaineth her. Now, Go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. See, if you be without chastisement, then you are bastards because you don't know who your father is. And in the context in Hebrews chapter 12, the father of spirits is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? But if you do not belong unto him as through a relationship, you came to him broken, contrite, and feared the Lord, called upon his name, um... You don't belong to him. He, he doesn't know you. Who does? John chapter 8, verses 42 on to verse 47. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceed, proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Because you're spiritually discerned. Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father, the devil. 
and the lust of your father he will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is the, as a liar and the father of it. So our Lord Jesus Christ is the father of spirits, and Satan is the father of lies. So is it possible that Satan can chasten his own to even make it appear as if they are Christians or of the Church of the Living God? Yeah. Verse 45. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. And see, this, this is uh, Hebrews chapter 12. All right, Hebrews chapter 4. Beg your pardon. Hebrews 4.12. Hebrews 4.12. Okay? Hebrews 4.12. I've seen this. You've seen this if you're of the church of the living God. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing, uh, dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. See, we are to examine ourselves through the scripture. Is the reason why some of you ain't in the scripture because you're not saved and you know that it'll convict you and cut you? Or are you saved and you just don't want to get that whooping? See, if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. And when you answer these devils and these lost people, with those of you who um, track online, go ahead and tell me about the responses you get from people for just posting scripture. See, this cuts. We got a sign on our front door because our neighbor across the way decided to mock us by putting up Halloween decorations on their on their door, so I put scripture on our front door. <laughs> okay, cuts them, cuts you, cuts you. Indeed, it does. Well, why do you think Satan gives you a Bible instead of the scriptures? Because the Bibles can pacify you in your sin. Well, this, the authorized version of the scriptures, cuts you. But now, go to Psalm 88. When someone who is of the church of the living God, who is in sin and knows it and is avoiding the Lord, God's going to chasten them. God can't hand these people over to the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved. And God forbid if that ever happened unto you. Okay? God forbid. But if it does. But see, chastisement in that, in the life of the Church of the Living God. Here's something really good that talks about this. Psalm 88. Psalm 88. O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, incline thine ear unto my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. Shimon, when he was fingered by Peter, what did he do? Did he go to the Lord himself? No. You pray for me. When you are chastened of the Lord, no, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't feel good. But afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. And let us not forget holiness being separate other than, okay? Because he doesn't want us to be taken up with that filth. 
Okay? So, when in chastening of the Lord, anyone who is truly of the church of the living God, you can put up a good fight, can't you, brother? Yeah, you can put up a good fight. But if you're of the church of the living God, God's going to win. Or God's going to kill you. Which one is it going to be? Don't be so stubborn and hard-hearted and stiff-necked that you love your sin over the Lord who died for you. God forbid. God forbid. Don't do that. But repent. Get on your knees. Pray. Get in the book, the scriptures. Let him talk to you through the scriptures. See, someone who is truly of the church of the living God in chastening, sooner or later, in time, you will learn to go sooner. But before that time come, you will, like David, when he uh, had Uriah killed, we don't know, it was probably about a year's time at least that he lived in that sin. But it finally caught up with him and he finally went to the Lord. When you're in chastening, you're going to go to the Lord sooner or later if you're of the church of the living God. How could you not? Because if the Lord is in you and he's chastening you, he's going to let you know. Okay? You're going to know that it's of the Lord sooner or later. But what? Are you going to fall back? Draw back? Put up the guard? It's like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do what I want to do. It'll get worse. Or he'll kill you. See, in chastening, those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God will eventually <laughs> pray more sooner rather than later, will eventually return unto their Lord. But those who don't, we'll get to that in a second. But let's continue in Psalm 88, verse 4. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. The lost world are the ones who are going to go down into the pit. And he says right here, okay, that I am counted with them because maybe he was living foolishly. Behaving as if he was of that world. See? Let's continue. Free among the dead. Free among the dead. They're dead in trespasses and sins. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 on to verse 3. They're dead. That's what we used to be. Dead in trespasses and sins. Now we're dead unto this world. But if you're troubled, you're in sin, you're free among the dead... Handed over to do that thing as to be handed over for the destruction of the flesh? Oh boy. Let's continue. Free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. Oh, you get what this is saying, don't you? Yeah, you do. Let's continue. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness, in the deeps. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves. Selah. Remember, more often than not, waves can be referred to as to people, like it is in uh, Revelation chapter 17, with all thy waves. Waves of affliction, waves of people. This is someone who is under chastisement, under affliction. And he knows it. Thou hast put away mine acquaintance far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up. I cannot come forth. Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Wilt thou shew wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee, Shilah? Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave, or thy faithfulness in destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark, and thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? 
but unto thee. Look at, look at the attention being paid unto the Lord in affliction, in chastisement. See, those who are of the church of the living God, who are under chastisement, are sooner or later going to turn unto the Lord. How can you not? If the Lord is in you, how can you not? And if he is in you and you are resisting and being stubborn, stiff-necked, you're in a lot of trouble. You're in danger. But yet someone who isn't of the church of the living God. More on that in a second. Let's continue this. Verse 13. But unto thee have I cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Please, Lord, don't kill me today. Please, Lord, show me my sin. Please, Lord, open my eyes. Help me to repent of these things that I need to. Show me what I need to do. Tell me and I will do it. Or you don't talk to him. You don't get into the scriptures. You don't want to talk to him because you know you're in sin. And you know, like he does here, uh, this is um, a psalm for the sons of Korah. Of Heman the Ezraite. This wasn't David. But whoever this was knew that he was had, the wrath of God was upon him and that he deserved it. And he was crying out to the Lord in his chastisement. See, that's what we at the Church of the Living God do. Lost people don't do that. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth, from my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They compassed they compassed me about together. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me, and mine acquaintance into darkness. Okay? What this ought to lead on to, what this ought to lead on to, is Psalm 51. Anyone, like I said, of the Church of the Living God who is going, who is under chastisement, sooner or later, you, you're going to have to bow your knee. If not, you're in big trouble. But now I have a video on Psalm 51, but for the flow of this, we must read Psalm 51. This is the closest thing that you're going to get to a sinner's prayer in the scriptures. The prayer of Manasseh in the Apocrypha, yeah, that's good, but that ain't scripture. That ain't scripture. Okay? Psalm 51. So, Psalm 88, talking about someone is under affliction for thy wrath, knowing that it was something that he did. Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. See, chastisement in those of us of the Church of the Living God, our chastisement comes because we have sinned against the Lord, and we know we have sinned against the Lord. And our guilt, our shame, is that we have sinned against the Lord. While someone who is pretending to be of the church of the living God, their shame and guilt is in that they got caught and not that they have sinned against God. That's the difference. That's the difference. See, our sins that we commit as the church of the living God and we're chasing for them. Lord, I sinned against you. I sinned against you. You only have I sinned against. See, chastisement will bring us onto that. That's the church of the living God. Someone who isn't? Lord, I'm sorry I did that. I'm sorry. 
They're more sorry that they got caught. They don't equate that I sinned against you. No, they are more sorry that they got caught, not sorry that they sinned against God. That's the difference. That's the difference. And someone who is uh, sorrowful that they sinned against God, of the church of the living God. I can't explain that to you, really, because those of you who are lost, you won't understand it. But those of you who are of the church of the living God, my brother and sister, you know what I'm talking about. Let's continue this. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him, our Lord Jesus Christ. Truth in the inward parts, on the inside, not just the outside. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom, fear of the Lord. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Dispensational difference right there. And under the law... The Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, was not permanently sealed in anyone. He could come and go, come and go as he pleased. Okay? Eternal security was not in the law, under the law, dispensation of the law, I should say. Okay? Dispensational difference. Today, you're saved, born again, converted, of the church of the living God, new creature. You're sealed. You're going to heaven. If No ifs, ands, or buts. Okay? Once saved, always saved. Okay? Let's continue. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Joy of salvation. Someone who is not of the church of the living God, even in affliction, we have the joy of salvation of the church of the living God. You fakes, you can fake it pretty good, but not good enough. Because your salvation is dependent upon you, not the Lord. Yeah. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltless, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousnesses, of thy righteousness. Um, who is David going to to remove his sin? He's going to the Lord. He knows that the Lord is the only one who can remove his sin. Not something you do by one of your sacraments. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall shew forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. And what do a lot of these people do? who have brokenness and contrition, but yet, I can do better. I'll do something that will make you happy, Lord. Instead of just throwing themselves at his mercies like David did. You're the only one who can do it. You're the only one who can do it. No, see these people who can have contrition, who can have brokenness, brokenness and contrition, beg your pardon. They can even have a little fear. But they're still resolved in their wicked heart that they can do something, that they can bring about something in themselves to turn away God's wrath when there ain't nothing you can do. Like you go to the cross and say, I can do better. I can do better. No, you come to the cross and it's like, I can't do anything! But no... There are those out there who can have brokenness and contrition and come to the cross and say, I can do better. Not, I can do, I can't do anything. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with whole burnt offering, and whole burnt, uh, with burnt offering and with act. I beg your pardon. Verse 19 again. 
Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Got it right. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. So see, godly sorrow, uh, chastisement, ought to lead us into repentance. Psalm 10. But what about those who come to, who can be broken, who can have contrition, but yet when they get to the fear of the Lord and putting everything, saying, I can't do anything, they still in their heart, in their heart, they say, like, I can do better. I can do better. I can do better. Give me a chance, Lord. I'll fix it. That's your problem, buddy. Yeah. You think you can fix it by yourself. I'll just do better. You know, that's what Trump says. And he's a Christian, remember. You're a Christian, huh? Never trust the Christian. <gasps> Psalm 10. Psalm 10. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices which they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. His heart's desire. Boast of his heart's desire. I, I'm broken and I'm contrite, but Lord, I can do better. Watch me. I'll make it better. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Yeah, how could he be because God's not in you? Yeah. And the pride of his countenance is bodily, you know, like these easy believism people. They're so proud. I save myself because I believe. Yeah. He has said, uh, his ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. Yeah. If you have a problem with judgment and you're claiming to be of the church of the living God, I love you. Uh, you're lost. You're lost. You're not saved. As the church of the living God, you love judgment, especially when it comes against yourself. But you love the righteous judgment of God because God is a God of judgment. Will not the judge of all the world do right? And if you are of the church of the living God, you're claiming you are, and you got a problem with judgment, uh, you're not saved. T time is too short to be messing around with this kind of stuff, boy. Time is way too short. You got a problem with judgment, you got a problem with God, you ain't saved. That's simple. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. Look at verse 6. These easy believers and devils, these devils who preach this love gospel. Okay? <laughs> I'm saved by my belief. I'm eternally secure because I believe. I'll never be in adversity because I'm saved because I believe. Did you? Were you broken and contrite? No, those are works. I just believe. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. Good luck at the great white throne of judgment, buddy. Yeah. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Well, he believes... And, you know, we can go ahead and sin. You you probably shouldn't sin, but you, you can go ahead and sin. God's grace covers everything. So, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, you're a new creature. <laughs> Might have to change a few things, but, yeah. Yeah. So, and isn't it funny that a lot of these easy believism devils don't have a problem with foul language? <laughs> You know all those emails you sent out with all that foul language of yours? Yeah. Still got those. Still got, got every single one of them. 
oh, but you recently got saved. Then, well, then again, there's one another one of your lies that's going to be proven, you know, that prove you a liar. Uh, you said it was 2011, but actually it was 2009. Yeah. Beg your pardon, people. I just got off track there. Anyway. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. Why is that? He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. As a lion in his den. As a lion. Satan walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking people whom he may devour. First Peter chapter 5, okay? He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth when he draweth him into his net. And it talks about in, uh, what is it, uh, Second Timothy, about uh, people re, uh, getting their foot out of the snare which Satan has laid for them. What is that snare? Verse 10, he croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. False humility looking oh so sad and so pathetic putting on a false front that you're so soft so weak so ill strength i'm so humble but yet there again he has said in his heart i shall never be moved see it's talking about false humility whose Focus is on themselves, but they're yet they're looking at the poor and blessed are the poor for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. OK, we are poor and needy as the church of the living God, poor and needy, not poor just of this, but poor because we need our Lord. We seek to be with him. We are poor and needy. Blessed are the poor. But yet these that are being described here, what is it? His eyes are privily set against the poor. Verse eight. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. To deceive those who are of the church of the living God. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. How does he do that? He croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. False humility. Oh, there are many here on YouTube who have a lot of false humility. I'm almost tempted to name them all, but I won't do that because that's what they want. <laughs> Is it making you wonder there? <laughs> Verse 11. He has said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand. Forget not the humble. Well, it says he humbleth himself. Yeah, to deceive. Well, the humble, those who submit themselves unto the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and come to him on his terms. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand. Forget not the humble. Wherefore doth the wicked contemn God? He has said in his heart, Thou wilt not require it. Thou hast seen it. For thou beholdest mischief and spite. To requite, to requite it with thy hand. The poor committeth himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. Break thou the man of break thou the arm of the break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man, his arm of flesh. Seek out his wickedness till thy till thou find none. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. His arm of flesh. Break him. Break him. The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. To judge the fatherless and the oppressed. That the man of the earth may no more oppress. And that is what was described here in Psalm 10. The man of the earth who is sensual, 
carnal, earthly, you know, a natural man who can put on a fair shoe, fake humility. Look at how humble I am. Yeah. And you want to see a really good example of this? Go to Numbers. Go to Numbers. Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. <laughs> Numbers chapter 14. Backstory. God said to the children of Israel, there is the land of Canaan. Go get it. I'll be with you. Trust me, I'm going to give it into your hands. Go get it. They sent out spies to spy out the land, to prove to people. And they came back, and a majority of them, except for two, um, Joshua, the son of Nun, and um, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, okay? Two out of 12, only two were like, let's go! The Lord's with us! The other 10 brought up an evil report. The land is good, but the people in the land are giants and we're grasshoppers in their sight. So they moaned and whined and it irritated God. It made him angry. And then God said, as a judgment against them, it's like all of you, except for Joshua and Caleb, um, those of you who complained and had, did not believe that I was going to do what I said I was going to do. The difference between the dispensations uh, among many is they, they were trusting one in what God will do as it, today we trust in what he has done at the cross. Okay, But see, he's saying, go get it. I'm with you. I'll, put, I'll give it in your hands. Trust me. Let's go do this. They said, no. No, God's not for us. The people are so big. We can't do this. Well, all the while, God was saying, I'm going to give it to you. Trust me. They didn't trust him. And because of that, he said, okay, all you guys who brought up the evil report, y'all going to die in the wilderness. 40 years. A year for a day. 40 days they went out to spy out the land, and they wandered 40 years in the wilderness for that generation who brought up an evil report against the land would die in the wilderness and their kids would be the ones to inherit the, uh, the promised land, and that's what Deuteronomy is about. That's the backstory. Before all that happened, okay, they were rebuked. The Lord said, I'm going to kill you. Moses interceded, and it's like, don't, don't, please, please, Lord, don't, 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 please. God wanted him to do that. God wanted him to do that. It's not that Moses talked him down. God was, wanted Moses to do that. God knew that he was going to spare them. But he did that for Moses, for Moses' sake, not ours. Okay? <laughs> but, or not his, excuse me. Okay? He did that for Moses' sake, not his own. Okay? But, so, they were rebuked, and the Lord's like, okay, you, you done messed it up. You done messed it up. That's over with. You blew it. Turn around. Now we're going to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. You, 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 you blew it. You can't go there now. You guys who brought up a poor report on the land, you're not going in there now. You blew it. In light of that, Numbers chapter 14, verses 40, under verse 45. And they rose up early in the morning and got them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and we and will go up unto the place which the Lord hath promised. For we have sinned. It's like, okay, we've sinned. Okay, we're here. Here we are. You promised us that we have sinned. So let's go. Verse 40. Yeah, we sinned. Okay, we did this. Okay, let's go. We can do better. We can go do this now. Okay, we were wrong. You're right. We sinned. Let's go. But, and Moses said, Wherefore now do ye transgress the commandment of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. But yet they're like, we can do better. They were a little sorry. Of course they were sorry. 
but more sorry for what they did rather than they offended God. And they were still in verse 40, we can go make this better by what we do. And Moses like, uh, don't, don't, okay? Verse 43, for the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword, because ye are turned away from the Lord. Therefore the Lord will not, will not be with you. You looking at verse 44? But they presumed to go up onto the top, onto the hilltop. They went anyway. See, while chasing the of the Lord leads on to repentance of the church of the living God, those who are fake, okay, I sin, okay, but I can do better. I can do better. I can make this right by what I do. Oh, uh, the Lord's not with you. Don't do it. But you're going to do it anyway, right? Tough guy. You see? But they presume to go up onto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekites came down and the Canaanites which dwelled in that hill and smote them and discomfited them on even unto Hormah. See, because at the root of that, okay, yeah, we sinned. We're sorry. We got caught. But like we just looked at, I could do better. I'll go. Let me go. I'll do better. Uh, no, you, you um, no, don't. Okay, I'm going to go anyway. <laughs> Fine. Then they get defeated. What's going on there? I'll tell you. You ought to know this one by heart, Church of the Living God. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. What is the, what was what is what is that? What we just looked at? Oh, Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 under verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Me, 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 me. It all circles around you. Not around the Lord. That's the difference. <laughs> That's the difference. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. You brought your change in your life. Not because you are a new creature. You did it. It's what you do. Not what the Lord brought in you by you by being worked out what he put in. It's what you did. Not what the Lord has done. See? The chastisement, you're sorry because of what you did, but you want to make it better. When you have sinned uh, under the Lord's chastisement, it's like, Lord, I'm sorry. I can't do anything. But no, no, you fakes, you can make it better. You can make it better. You can, uh, you can uh, believe, you can say the right thing. Yeah, you can have a changed life without being a new creature. You can even have chastisement from the world. Getting messed up because reap what you sow. Well, the chastening from the Lord leadeth his children unto repentance. The chastening of the children of the devil lead to your destruction. How do you know? Saw so, uh, Galatians chapter 5 again. Galatians chapter 5. No, time is so short, people. And with what's coming, I mean, I, around here, the uh, grocery stores, shelves are de being depleted. What you've been warned of is starting to happen. Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 16, on to the close of the chapter. This I say then, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. 
For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. So if you are led of the spirit, the spirit, even in chastisement, will guide you into all truth. And um, will guide you onto true repentance. And the spirit that is in you will not speak contrary to the word. But see, the spirit that be in them is the spirit of the world that produce a fear of the world, not the fear of God. There's a difference. Okay? But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery. Turning against... Um, Cheating on your spouse? To whom are you espoused? Are you espoused unto the Lord or unto the world? Fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, you know, the one you look at in the mirror, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, Heresies, and if I'm not mistaken, um, Galatians 5.20, witchcraft, if I'm not mistaken, that's pharmakeia, if I'm not mistaken. Envyings, envy much, yeah. Murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Inherit the kingdom of God. Spiritual. Spiritual, because those are works of the flesh. Now, let us get something straight. Anyone of the church of the living God can commit any one of those. Absolutely they can. We have to acknowledge that. But see, the difference in the chastisement, which we already looked at, one that comes from our Lord will guide us on to repentance, while the other will guide us on to self-glorification, death. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. You might be saying, well, the fruit of the Spirit versus the... <laughs> and look at that. The fruit of the Spirit, the works of the flesh. Do you see in verse 19, the works of the flesh? And in verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit. You see that? <laughs> Because, like, like, like we have been saying, the one go to the Lord for, uh, in repentance, knowing that they can't do anything themselves and look for the Lord. The one go saying, I can do better. The works of the flesh, while the other is the fruit of the Spirit. That's the difference. That's the difference. And they that are Christ, uh, they that are Christ's, have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, works of the flesh, provoking one another, envying one another. Which one are you? Romans chapter 6, verses 16 on to verse 23. Which one are you obeying? What spirit is in you? Is it the Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you just faking it with the spirit of religiosity? Which one is it? How do you know? We've been looking at it. How to decipher it. See, at the end, at the end, if you are saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God, Sooner or later, that chastisement is going to kill you 
or going to bring you to repentance, boy, one or the other. It's going to bring you to God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But see, someone who is faking it always reverts back to themselves. You shall be like the Most High. That's the difference. Romans chapter 6, verses 16 on to the close of the chapter. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being they then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men, because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now, Yield your members, servants, to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Are you ashamed because you sinned against God? Or are you ashamed because you got caught? That's the difference, see. I sin, I've sinned against the Lord. And so, oh God, I'm sorry, I've sinned against you. You lost people, you fake. I got caught. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll do better. But now being made free from sin, And become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness, being separate, and the end everlasting life. You know, we we looked at what you reap what you sow. If you sow to the flesh, you'll reap corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, you'll uh, reap life everlasting. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Verses 9 and 11. 9 unto 11, excuse me. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. Now, godly sorrow works in two ways. To bring someone onto salvation and to correct them after salvation. See, these devils say that godly sorrow only means one thing. Bloop, no, no. Without godly sorrow, there is, there is no salvation. But godly sorrow, after salvation, after the Lord is in you, that godly sorrow when you have sinned, see, it's a double-edged sword, not just a straight razor. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. This whole, this whole video can be summed up right there. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. Sooner or later... The chastisement of the Lord upon the church of the living God is going to yield the peaceable fruits of righteousness and they are going to repent or you're going to be so stubborn you're going to die. But those who are fake, the wages of sin is death. You can do better. Yeah, keep working, buddy. Keep working. Putting on that fake front. It's so soft. Yeah. Yeah. It's so humble. Yeah. For behold, the selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, 
What carefulness it wrought in you! Yea, what clearing of yourselves! Yea, what indignation! Yea, what fear! Fear of man or fear of the Lord! Yea, what vehement desire! What zeal! Yea, what revenge! In all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. And see, go to now Proverbs chapter 29. Do I need to tell, do we need to talk about the faithfulness of our Lord? I didn't think we, I don't think we have to because, and if any of you think we should, let me know. Um, because the Lord is faithful. He is faithful to himself. He is faithful to his word. And we have promises from our Lord through his word. So he has exalted his word above his name. And how do you know of the, who, the name of our Lord? Through his word. Okay, so our Lord is faithful, faithful to his word. He's not going to contradict his word. Our Lord tells you he's going to do something, he's going to do it. He's faithful. He cannot deny himself. If we believe not, you know, that doesn't mean as far as salvation, no. But if we have doubt that he's going to do what he said he's going to do, um, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. But see, as our Lord is faithful in his word, and because we have come to him on his terms and are grafted into the tree of the Jew, he, his faithfulness is on to us to his word because we belong unto him. What is our response? See, who are you faithful unto? Are you faithful unto God or on your flesh? Catholic? <laughs> Catholic? What are you faithful unto? Your God, you Catholics, your God is flesh. You're, you're of Satan. You are the church of the living God. Our faithfulness is unto who? Proverbs chapter 29, verses 1 on to verse 6. He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and not without remedy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, brethren, lost people. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Who ruleth you? Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father. But he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. Whoso loveth wisdom, the fear of the Lord, rejoiceth his father. But he that keepeth company with harlots, uh, come here. who's the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth? Hmm. That'd be Rome and her army, the Jesuits. Uh, who is the father of Rome? Who is the little G God of this world? Satan. You get it? Uh -huh. The king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. Hmm. Flatter him. Flattery. A net for his feet to take him in a snare to catch him off guard. Oh, to humble himself that the strong, that the poor may fall by his strong ones. False uh, humility again. Hmm. In the transgression of an evil man, there is a snare. And he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity become hateful. Mm -hmm. But the righteous doth sing and rejoice. The righteous considereth the cause of the poor. But the wicked regardeth not to know it. The cause of the poor. Uh, we are poor and needy as the church of the living God. So the cause of the poor... What, what caused you to come unto our Lord Jesus Christ? But the wicked regardeth not to know it. Don't judge people's fruits. In Acts chapter 7, Acts chapter 7, see, when truth is given 
Yeah, uh, you know, when you receive truth, what do you do with truth? Hmm? Do you know someone who is of the Church of the Living God? You appreciate a rebuke from a brother or a sister, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. But someone who you use the sword of the Spirit and tell them truth of Scripture, who are faking it. Acts chapter seven, verses fifty-four on to verse sixty. When they heard, this is after Stephen lays in on him. And then he's like, you stiff-necked. Okay. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. Where in Acts chapter 2, it talks about they were pricked or cut. It's a difference. These were cut to the heart. And what did they do? They gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up, looked up steadfastly unto heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. They didn't want to hear it. Stopped their ears and ran on him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, thinking they did God a service, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. How many of us can do that when we're being stoned, right? Go to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Who are you faithful unto? That's what it boils down to. Are you faithful unto your flesh? Or are you faithful unto God? Because like I've been telling you, someone of the church of the living God who deals, who is under chastisement of the Lord, that is either going to kill them because they're going to be handed over to the destruction of the flesh so the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus, or that's going to bring them onto genuine repentance. But someone who isn't of the church of the living God may be having chastisement by just reaping what they sow, the destruction of their flesh. They can have can, uh, brokenness and contrition, but they always seem to say, I can do better. Let me do, let me do. There's something I can do. I can make it better. You shall know them by the fruits. James chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 10. We're almost done. Keeping an eye on the time here. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members, your flesh? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not. Why? Because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever there will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And that's every single solitary Christian that you run into in these church buildings. Be like the world to win the world. Oh, we're friends with the world. <laughs> Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. First, don't look at me. Don't look. Verse 7, boy. Verse 7, here it is. Here it is. Are you... Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. See, some like to say... In verse 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you without submitting himself, therefore, to God. 
and in chastisement, we submit ourselves unto God. We have the church of the living God. We submit ourselves unto God. But those who are fake, they submit themselves unto their own selves, their own God, the one they look at in the mirror. Because ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Ye will be like the Most High. So they yield unto their flesh. Like Oscar Wilde said, the best way to get rid of a temptation is to give in to it. Brilliant! Yeah. Um, you can't have anything with God unless you submit unto him. Oh, but that's a work, right? <laughs> draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. And you got to remember, the book of James is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. And when the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble figure it out, it's like, what? oh, wow, those guys at the Church of the Living God who believed in the authorized version of the Scriptures, they were the ones telling us the truth. Yeah, talk about uh, this is this is in the New Testament written for the time of the Jacob's uh, time of Jacob's trouble. But don't you think isn't this some good instruction in righteousness, there, brother, sister? Right? Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Repent. Purify your hearts. How do you do that? Put away those things that are getting in the way. Watching Hollywood movies. Playing things on keyboards of the video game. Listening to wicked music. Drinking. Doing whatever. Purify your heart. Get, get, get rid of that stuff, man. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. See, there are those out there who say... Well, I've been doing this for so long. Why quit now? Let me eat and drink for tomorrow. I'm going to die. No, no. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning. No, don't weep. And don't uh, uh, eat and drink for tomorrow. You should die. No. Repent. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up. Because our Lord is faithful. Who are you faithful unto? Who are you faithful unto? You come to our Lord even with brokenness and contrition, but yet you say, I can do better. You're faithful unto yourself, not to God. Proverbs chapter 20. We're almost done. Sorry, it's got to watch the time. Can only go three hours. <laughs> if I had unlimited time and not confined to three hours, you people would be in trouble. <laughs> because, yes, I would, if I could go over three hours, there would be an occasional four or five hour video. Absolutely, there would. It's just the way it is. Proverbs 20, come on, come on. Proverbs 20. Verses 5 under verse 7. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding, one who is separated, will draw it out. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Oh yeah, you are faithful, ain't you, to yourself. I saved myself because of my belief. Yeah, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Yeah, buddy. I feel like the Apostle Paul for all the people I've led to the Lord. God has just blessed me. Yeah, you are. You sure are faithful to the flesh, to your father, the devil. The just man walketh in his, in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. His children are blessed after him. The just man walketh in his integrity. In his, integrity. his children, those who follow his example, are blessed after him. But verse 6, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. 
You know, if you guys stand there and sit there and proclaim to me about all that you've done for our Lord. Hey, hey, hey. I, I rejoice hearing from brethren. It's like, hey, Brad, you know, the other day I had a chance to do this. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If that's all you're doing. Okay. I hate, I myself have fallen into that myself because I have a pride problem. Some of you, my brethren, know it's like, yeah, Brad, there's, uh, I've seen it. And yeah, you've seen it. Even my enemies have seen it. My pride. I have a big pride problem. Praise the Lord that he gave me a thorn in the flesh. And people who love me enough to uh, keep me in line. <laughs> okay. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. If you got to constantly proclaim your own goodness and uh, let another man praise thee and not thine own lips, th chances are... 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Oh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 1 under verse 7. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be find, found faithful. Are you faithful unto the Lord or are you committing adultery? Are you faithful unto the Lord or are you faithful unto this skin suit which Satan loves? But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self. What is Paul talking? We already looked at it. But he who judgeth me is the Lord. How does the Lord judge you? By examining yourself through the scriptures. That's how our Lord judges you, through the scriptures. Okay? When he says, I judge not mine own self, he's not trusting in his own ethics, his own morals. He's trusting in the Lord to judge him righteously. Because if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But he just said, I don't judge my own self. Right. We don't judge our own selves. That's what the scripture is there for. Okay. That's what the scripture is there for. Judgment comes from God. God gave us the scriptures. We don't judge our own selves, no, by our own dictate, but by the scriptures. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me <laughs> is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time. Don't judge. No. No, that's not what that's talking about. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. And then shall every man have praise of God. Um, the Lord will reveal things to you about certain things within yourself and others. So therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, until the Lord reveal to it to you. You know, you might have a doubt or question about somebody. Um, if they say they are of the church of the living God. And see, this this is the thing, okay? Um, you know, unlike what the uh, provincial in England um, who said, uh, I knew someone saved the minute I gave it, shake their hand. Yeah, right. Okay? <laughs> yeah. No. You can have questions about someone, but see, unless it's glaringly obvious, in order to weed out the fake, it does take time. And until the Lord show you these things, don't judge until the Lord show you. The Lord was like, hey, you see that guy? Hang back a little. I'll tell you later. It's like, okay. Then you, you heed that. Then later on, whatever it is, then the Lord's like, shows you. It's like, oh, wow. So, therefore, judge nothing before the time. Until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. 
and then shall every man have praise of God. Because the Lord, we, we looked at Hebrews chapter 4.12, okay? Let's go there again. Hebrews chapter 4.12. See, we're supposed to judge ourselves and others according to the scriptures, okay? And until the Lord judge, give us that judgment through the scriptures, okay? We are not to judge. Because our judgment, we, we don't come up with this out of our own minds, our judgment, judging, comes from the scriptures. We are to judge, but in accordance with the scripture. So we can come across someone lost or fake and say, you're a sinner, don't judge me. This is what the scripture says. The scripture says what you're doing is sin. So because I'm of the church of the living God and his ambassador, I am to judge you according to the standard, which, I, which judges me, okay? So we are to judge, but according to the scripture, not something that we make up, see, because in Hebrews chapter four, verse 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So we judge according to the scripture. We are to judge, yes. But, therefore judge nothing, uh, back in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. So, wait for the Lord to reveal it unto you through the scripture. And you know, when you meet someone and you're talking and then the Lord's like, Hey, draw back from that. I'll tell you later. Okay. Okay. Then he show you through scripture, see. You see, because if you judge by your own dictate, well, you might as well say that you saved yourself by your own belief because you are your own God. And what does he say in verse 4? But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Magnified thy word above thy name. And these things, brethren, have I in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou hast that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory? As if thou hadst not received it? Meaning, w wait a minute, so you saved yourself by your own belief? <laughs> You're boasting as if you hadn't received it, but you did receive it as a gift because he received you, you didn't receive him. But ultimately, what are you faithful to? See, I judge not mine own self. No, who judges me? God, through the scriptures. And self-examination comes through the scriptures. How do you line up? You fail. Yeah, so do I. So do I. But see, judgment comes through scripture. Why aren't you reading scripture again? First Timothy chapter 1. Got 12 minutes left. 1 Timothy chapter 1. I'm going to get this done. Verses 9 on to the close of the chapter. Then we'll be done. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 9 on to verse 20. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for men slayers. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, sodomites, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to the sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. The law was there as a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. The law was there to show us our sin. Okay? Show you you can't save yourself. You can't do better. 
according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith, with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Personal. Personal. Not a blanket. We're all sinners. Yes, we are. What about you? Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Meaning, he is, their, he is our example. He is our example. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. You know, we're not supposed to be passive wimps. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning, concerning faith have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Why is that? Because probably they were their own God. They serve their flesh. See, that's the measure. Who are you faithful to? Are you faithful unto our Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, you say you are, yeah? Yeah? Are you examining yourself? Daily? Hmm. What about chastisement? What about belief and saying certain things and change life and chastisement? Who are you faithful to? We of the church of the living God are faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ. He takes precedent over anything and everything. But see, someone who is not of the church of the living God, but who can say certain things, who uh, believe, who have a changed life and aren't really new creatures, um, have even chastisement. But that chastisement draws them onto self-glorification rather than self-mortification. <laughs> Which one are you? Which one are you faithful to? Which one are you faithful to? The Lord or to yourself? It's going to be it for this video, brethren going to be uploading this. It's going to take a while to upload. Um, as you can, it's been doing this for <laughs> almost three hour video here, but um, thank you to all you brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God, who, uh, who have prayed for us and been there for us. And um, thank you so much to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hopefully this will help you, help some of you. We love you. Thank you, and we will see you in the next video.